Hey guys, here we are in DCS world, as always. And today we're going to be discussing a topic that I've been asked about a ton since the latest open beta update was released just before Christmas. As we all know, in this update, the F-16 had its radar tuned to allow it to be affected by electronic warfare systems from both friendly and enemy aircraft. This will degrade your radar picture and prevent you from being able to track targets, find the range of targets, or even be able to see targets at all on your radar. This has led to a lot of DCS World pilots jumping onto servers, creating their own small missions, things of this nature, and not seeing those new effects in those missions or on those servers. That's because you, in the mission editor, you have to actually go in and tell the AI how to use its ECM systems on board its particular aircraft. So that's what we're going to be exploring in this video today. We're going to set up the ECM of a SU-27 flanker, and then we're going to fly through and show you the effects of the ECM on the radar of the F-16. So as you guys can see here, over the Syria map, we've got a very simple little setup. We've got our F-16 right over here, and we've got an enemy Su-27 flanker, and we're about 45 nautical miles apart. Now the reason why we're using the Su-27 flanker for this demonstration is because it's kind of your prototypical bad guy jet, quote unquote, that you guys are going to be using in a lot of your missions. We're also using this aircraft because of the fact that it does not have an onboard ECM system, so that way we can show you exactly how to set this stuff up. Alright, so on the airplane group panel on the right hand side of our mission editor here, we're going to go ahead and rename this group Su-27, just so that way we can keep better track of it if we were to say build this mission out into a more complex scenario with lots of different groups of aircraft. It's always good to keep things named in a way that allows you to find things very, very easily. For the task, we're definitely going to leave it set to intercept here. So intercept is going to allow that Su-27 to focus right in on our F-16 that we're going to be flying in this example later on. And if we had him set to say cap or something like that, he might uh, tend to wander around the map a little bit more trying to fly, say, a combat air patrol rather than focusing right in on our friendly F-16 we're going to be flying. For the skill level, we're going to leave that set to veteran because the higher the skill level of the AI, the more affecting his use of his ECM systems are going to be against your own radar as you're flying against him. And coming down to the waypoint editing box down here, at the very bottom, we've got the advanced waypoint actions box down here. And this is where we actually interact with the AI and tell him how to use the ECM systems we want him to be using against us. So with a more recent open beta update here, Eagle Dynamics has actually baked in a bunch of these advanced waypoint actions into the various tasks for the AI. These are going to be things that really help the AI focus into exactly what you want them to do in those missions that you're building. So things like restricting air to ground attack on a intercept flight or a combat air patrol flight is going to make sure they focus on enemy aircraft rather than trying to say find a tank and strafe a tank and then of course frustrating you as the mission editor because he's not doing what you want him to do. And then different things like air-to-air -air attack ranges, report waypoint pass, radio usage with a radar contact, things like that that uh, are just nice to have baked in now into DCS world. So when we add in our ECM options, all we got to do is come here to the little add button here, and we're going to go to the set options function action. We want to come down and find the ECM using option. And we have four different options for the AI and its electronic countermeasures usage. We of course have never use, and in that section it's very simple, it's the aircraft will just never use its ECM systems even if it does have an onboard electronic countermeasure system or a potted system or something like that. The next option is of course use if, use if only locked by radar. The aircraft will only use its ECM systems in a very defensive uh, position where it will try to break a lock that it, you have on that enemy aircraft. So if you're setting up for, say, a missile attack on the Su-27 you lock him up, he's going to be like, oh shit, I'm about to get hit by a missile. So he turns on his ECM systems and then he tries to break that lock. 
Next, the one that I think is probably the best use case if you're trying to, say, set up a very complex electronic warfare scenario in your mission is to use if detected or lock by radar. So it uses the same logic as the previous option, but also if he gets a nails on your F-16, he's going to start turning on his jammer periodically. So he's going to try to evade your detection entirely by using his ECM systems. So if he sees that there is an enemy radar out there on his uh, SPO raw system in his uh, in his Su-27, he's going to flip on that jammer and hopefully try to deny you even detection of his aircraft, but also definitely deny you the ability to lock him up until you burn through that uh, you know ECM system by getting really, really close to him. And then, of course, we have the always used, which I think is another one that you're probably not going to want to use all that often. Maybe more if Eagle Dynamics adds AI aircraft to DCS world that are electronic warfare specialized aircraft, like, say, an EA-6B Prowler or different versions of the Su-24 or even the Tu-95 Bear. Those kinds of aircraft that are always going to be jamming all the time, and that's what you want. But for a def more defensive-oriented electronic uh, countermeasure system, like on a Su-27 here, you don't want to have that always on, because that's like him shining a flashlight in your eyes from in the forest. Hey, here I am, look at me, come and shoot me, kind of situation. So I think that the best two options are going to be these two metal ones for you. So use if detected or lock by radar, and use only lock by radar. So we'll go ahead and go with this option here, and I think this will be the most interesting for our fly through today. Next, we want to go to the payload panel. And as we know, the Su-27 does not have an internal electronic countermeasure system, at least not in the very early Su-27 that is modeled in the Flaming Cliff series in DCS World at the moment. So in order to make sure that he has an ECM system to actually use, we need to add the payload to his wingtips. So we'll come down here and we'll add pods, the Sorbit Saya ECM pod, and we can see those guys pop up on his wingtips there. And now he's got an ECM system to use. This is the same thing, of course, if we're going to, say, make an AI F-16. We need to make sure that he has an ECM pod on his centerline station. So keep that in mind, guys. Otherwise, this might be another kind of bottleneck where you might be a little bit frustrated. What the heck? I'm turning on all the AI options and nothing's happening. Well, it might be the fact that the actual jet you're trying to use does not have an internal integrated ECM system like an F-14 or an F-A-18, things like that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and hop into the mission and get things started. And the reason, guys, why we don't have any weapons on board of the Su-27 we're flying against today is to just show you guys what it's going to look like to actually come into the merge when your uh, enemy AI is actually trying to use its ECM systems. If we gave him, say, long-range air-to-air missiles, we wouldn't be able to see that decreasing range and actually get a very good picture of the burn-through range where our radar is going to be some become so powerful it's going to overpower his jammer and be able to allow us to get a good lock on the aircraft. With the F-16's radar against, say, the Su-27 or other Eastern Bloc aircraft, that seems to be around uh, 25 to 15 nautical miles. There seems to be a little bit of a random number generator in there in the DCS system to kind of come up with a kind of, you know, variance to it. So we'll go ahead and fly on out here. We know from previous testing that the F-16's radar can pick up a Su-27, about a medium-sized radar target, at about 40-ish nautical miles. So we'll see if that holds true today. And we can see that he is definitely out there. All right. So 
on our radar screen of our F-16 here, we can see that we have a target on our radar here with the two chevron symbols letting us know that that is a target that is currently jamming us and we can see that the radar scale is set to 80 nautical miles now we know that if we look on the f10 map that su-27 is definitely not all the way at 80 nautical miles in fact he's just under 30 nautical miles from us in actuality now the reason why this contact is up at the top of our screen at what we would think is 80 nautical miles is because his defensive jammer on his wingtips of his Su-27 is preventing us from getting ranging information on him to allow us to get a, a hard lock on him and then guide a missile into him. Because how is the missile going to choose its correct flight path to the target if it doesn't know exactly how far away it is? Now, as you guys will see, eventually we're going to lock him up here and we're going to burn through his jammer to be able to then get that ranging information from him. So let's go ahead and continue on. All right. And we can see the fact that we don't know how far away from him is evidenced again by our distance to target with the F number here on the bottom right of the HUD currently at 99.9 .9 nautical miles away. That's kind of the error code, I guess you could say, that says I have no idea how far away he is. And of course, we're rapidly closing on him in actuality, and boom, right there you just saw that we burned through his jammer's capability. We can see that he's still jamming us, but our radar was able to burn through that protection from his jammer and allow us to get that ranging information that we would need in order to get a good weapon solution to fire a missile at him. So let's go ahead and continue on. All right, let's go ahead and merge with him. And we can see he's definitely still jamming, but we are completely burned through his protection capability. And let's set up for a left to left. And so we're going for a one circle engagement and looks like he's taking it vertical like the AI always does. And we're so close to him now that our dogfight modes are easily able to burn through his ECM and got him. So I hope this video was definitely instructional for you guys and showing you guys how to actually set up the ECM systems of the enemy AI, as well as the friendly AI that's gonna be flying around you. Always keep in mind that friendly ECM is going to be just as detrimental to your own ship radar, just like the enemy will. And uh, this can also be a really fantastic way of illustrating to yourself how your own ECM systems are affecting the bad guys around you. If, say, you were to fly against an F-16 with an ECM pod, for instance. So, if you guys liked the video, please give us a like and a subscribe. And stay healthy out there, guys. And uh, fly safe. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.